In this video, we're going to take a look at limits at infinity. We're going to look at both finite and infinite limits at infinity, but we are not going to talk about the computational techniques. So if you're looking for that video, please go on to 3.5.2, where we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes and computational techniques. When we talk about limits and infinity, essentially we're talking about the end behavior of a function. So typically in the middle of a function, something's going to happen. And then as you approach the left or as X gets infinitely small, or as you go to the right, as X gets infinitely large, what's happening to Y? So when we talk about limits and infinity, we're saying what happens to Y? So one option is that y is going to approach a specific value or possibly two specific values when we're looking to the left and to the right. So in our first example, we can see our purple function here. And as I'm moving to the left, I can see that my function y value is approaching negative three. But as I'm moving to the right, I can see that the y value is approaching positive one. So those would be my limits. So as the limit, as x approaches negative infinity, so as I'm moving to the left of, we'll just call this f of x, would be negative three, but the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x would be positive one. The other option is that as x gets increasingly large or small, so does y. So every time you graph a polynomial function, which is y equals x squared, or y equals x cubed, or in this case, this is a quintic function where the highest degree is five, and then there's some other stuff going on. Whenever you have any polynomial function, you're never going to have a limit um, of L of some value at infinity. You're going to have a limit of infinity at infinity. So as I can see on this function, as I move to the left, the Y value is getting increasingly small. So in this case, the limit, wow, let me try that again. The limit as X approaches negative infinity, and we'll call it G of X, would be negative infinity. It's going down forever. Whereas to the right, as I move to the right of this function, I can see that the y value is getting increasingly large. So the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x is positive infinity. So again, this is just to highlight the notation. These are the same two examples. This is how we would notate each of those. The limit as x approaches infinity of x, f of x is equal to one. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to negative three. And then for our polynomial function, we've got positive infinity and negative infinity. I did want to throw in the official mathematical definition of a finite limit at infinity. Uh, if you understand what a limit is and you get confused with all the math terminology, feel free to skip to the end of this video and go on to the next video talking about horizontal asymptotes. But here's the official mathy definition. It says, let L be a real number. The statement, the limit as X approaches infinity, and I'm just gonna focus on this one because obviously this one's negative infinity, so it's the same idea. The statement, the limit as X approaches infinity of F of X is equal to L, means that for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists an M greater than zero, such that F of X minus L, absolute value, is less than epsilon, epsilon whenever x is greater than m. So what does that mean? Basically what it means is this. As we can see, we've got this function here and it's approaching the line y equals l. So it's kind of oscillating on both sides of it, but it's getting closer and closer to l. And we can see as we approach infinity, it's just going to keep getting closer. So that is our limit. That's the line that is our limit. And what we're saying is for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists an M greater than zero. So epsilon is talking about the distance between Y 
and the value of our function. So I'm going to do my best to draw two lines that are hopefully about equally spaced from the line y equals l. And that distance is called epsilon. So what we're saying is there's some m value. Let's say here's m. There's some m value such that as I move to the right of m, that all of my values for my function are going to be within epsilon of the line y equals l. That's really all it's saying. So the only reason I bring it up is a, it's a mathematical definition, and b, we should be sort of used to the notion of epsilon being a neighborhood around something because we've talked about it before, when we talked about limits before. So again, same thing going in the opposite direction. If I'm talking about the limit as x approaches negative infinity, it's the same idea. Again, this is just another formal definition. This is the definition of an infinite limit at infinity. Last, we were talking about finite limits, so when we actually had a limit. So this is the infinite limits. We're saying the statement that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals infinity means for each positive number m, there exists a corresponding number n greater than zero, such that f of x is greater than m whenever x is greater than n. So again, they complicated something that doesn't need to be complicated. They're saying for some number n that f of x is going to be greater than m at any point to the right of this every y value is going to be greater than this. That's essentially what it's saying. So it's just saying as x gets bigger, so does y. Or as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. We get the idea. Coming up next, we're going to put what we learned into play, into action, by talking about horizontal asymptotes. So we didn't really talk about any computational techniques for finding limits at infinity. That's coming in the next video.